This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I am Pastor Nanette Christofferson, and along with Pastor Steve Talmadge, who is out on vacation this week, we'd like to welcome you to our online and in-person contemporary worship service. We have a few announcements this morning before we get started. We are now accepting water donations that will go to Grace in the City. They offer a respite program for the homeless. And so if you'd like to donate cases of water, you can either bring a case of water and leave it by your car during church service and someone will come and pick it up. You can send in money under our donate button. You can come to the office and offer money or gift cards to purchase water and water will be purchased for these folks. VBS is just around the corner, July 11th through the 15th. This year we are going to do three service projects with the kids. One of them is backpacks and getting school backpacks ready for school. We will also be making blessing bags and we will also be uh, doing a sock project. All of these are things that will be donated to different places. The backpacks will go to where we normally send our backpacks, to La Masita's Family Shelter and also to Wilson Elementary School. And we will also be offering the blessing bags that you can take with you when you see someone who is homeless and you can bless them that day with water and crackers and other things that are in the bags. So if you check the E! News, it has a whole list of things that we will need to help make VBS successful. So please check over that list of donations from snack foods to um, all kinds of ways that we'll be trying to help others. Happy Father's Day. So I hope that dads today have an opportunity to be celebrated and loved on and you have a chance to be with family and friends during this day. And one last opportunity for you to serve this summer, Family Promise will be here July 31st to uh, to August 7th. We will need people to make meals, we'll need people to spend the night, we'll need people to be hosts and hostesses. So if you are interested in helping, again in our e-news is Denise Holla's email, and you can email her and she will be happy to put you to work, a way to serve uh, these families that are experiencing homelessness. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds as we get ready to enter into worship, and please stand for our morning song. Clap your hands with me. As we worship the Lord this morning. We've waited for this day. We've gathered in your name. We're calling out to you. Your glory like a fire. Awakening desire. We'll burn our hearts with truth. You're the reason we're here. Mighty river flowing from your heart, filling 
And let us pray. Lord God, we ask that you open up the floodgates, fill us with your spirit, and as we hear your word this day, may we embrace it, and may we believe it, and may we go out and live it. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Our worship continues with the reading of the gospel and our gospel acclamation. Please stay standing. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Good morning. Happy Father's Day. Today's gospel is taken from Luke chapter 8, verses 26 through 39. Then they arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As he stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him, he was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles. But he would break the bonds and be driven by the demons to the wilds. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now, there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding, and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter those. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herd saw what had happened, They ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Good morning. morning. Have you ever thought that you were very well prepared for something, but then realized that you weren't? Mark and I had dated two and a half years before we got married. We met in Japan while I was teaching there American military children on an American military base, and he was a pilot for the United States Air Force. I had watched other wives complain about when their husbands would go TDY. TDY means temporary duty elsewhere. And I thought, well, I will not be like that. Because you know that this is part of the deal when you say, I do, to someone who is serving in the United States military. And so when Mark asked me to marry him, I thought, I got this down. I know what this is about. So we were married in South Dakota, but then we went to our new station, which was in Germany. And we were there probably three days when he came home from work telling me 
that he was going to go TDY. He was going to be gone for three weeks, and he was leaving the next day. I put on my brave face and said, this is what I said I'd do. And so I drove him to the base that morning. He had me drive so I would know exactly how to get there. I prayed on my way back after dropping him off that I would be able to find our apartment in the small town of village that we lived in in Binsfeld. And once I found that apartment and went back inside, now mind you, this is before Google Maps and all these great cell phones and all of these things, I started blaming. I blamed the squadron commander for sending him off so soon after we were married. I blamed the United States Air Force. I blamed Congress in Washington, D.C. <laughs> Whatever I could do, I was spewing blame upon anyone and everyone. Until I realized, I realized that I had become one of those wives in just a matter of days of being married. Blame. Blame is defined by Brene Brown as something that we use to discharge and get out of us our pain and our anger. When we blame someone or something, we are trying to get out our anger and our discomfort. For blame is the inverse act of accountability. And accountability is so much harder. Blame is easier. Blame is convenient. But accountability means that we are called to be vulnerable. We are called to be vulnerable with those of whom we are in relationship with. We blame because it's oftentimes in an eight sense of who we are. We blame because we want to protect ourselves. We blame because maybe we don't want to look at ourselves carefully. It's far easier to put that on someone else. But there are some real downsides to blame. For when we blame, it doesn't stop our suffering. Blame doesn't stop our anxiety. And at the deep darkest places of blame, at the root of blame, is fear. And probably one of the things that we don't even think that blame does is that blame doesn't offer a way for restoration or hope. Would you please pray with me? Good and gracious God, as we prepare to enter into your word, Lord, guide us to your truths. Might your Holy Spirit lead us to paths that we know we need to take. Lord, and might you encourage us as we hear your word this day and trust in your love and your forgiveness. Father, Spirit, Jesus, may you enter into the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts, and may it be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Grace and peace to you from the one who brings to us hope and new life. Amen. Today is the second Sunday after Pentecost. We are in the season, if you take a look at the banners, a very long season of a green season, or a color of the season is green. Green meaning growth. It's a time of discipleship, a time of growth. We find ourselves in the Gospel of Luke today. We haven't been in this Gospel since Easter Sunday, and we've landed in Luke chapter 8. If we take a look at Luke chapter 8, we see that Jesus and his disciples have been preaching and teaching and sharing this good news of Jesus Christ. Jesus has been teaching in parables. He teaches the parable of the sower in chapter 8. He then explains why he teaches in parables, and then he explains the parable of the sower. But before we get to our reading today, I think there's two interesting points that need to be made. In Luke 8.21, Jesus is asked, who is his family? And he says his family are those who believe in the word of God 
and then do it. And then in Luke 8.25, Jesus and the disciples are out on the lake where they experience a huge storm. The disciples are full of fear for they've never experienced a storm like this. Jesus calms the waters and he asks the disciples, where is your faith? Have you no faith? So I'd like you to imagine just for a moment that you're a disciple on this boat that you've just overcome the storm of which you thought was going to put you under, and then you've landed on the east side of the Sea of Galilee into Gentile territory. And the person that greets you is this, is this man who is a demonic from Jerusalem. Do you think fear would capture your body once again? It is very important to this gospel writer that he include this scene of Jesus amongst the Gentiles because Luke wants us, wants us to know that Jesus' powers go beyond all boundaries. Jesus demonstrates this power by healing this man that is full of demons. And that this love that Jesus intends not only for his disciples is meant for everyone, for all. It's easy in this passage to kind of get hung up on the language of the demons. Now we can add language, a biblical language to it. We can add theological language to these demons. We can add medical language. We can add sociological language to these demons. But the point is, is that this man is broken. His agency has been taken from him. His identity has been taken. Some might even call this man a classic monster. Because this man runs around naked. This monster runs around naked in the village. This monster is found in the graveyard. No matter how they try to bind him, he can get away. He rants and raves in the graveyard and speaks to the dead. But the important thing to remember is that this man is a human being. When we look at this text, we might want to say that this only happened in the ancient world, that this is just something that happened then. But I challenge us. I challenge us because this word that we have today is the living word of God. And if we think that happened only 2,000 years ago, then we need to take another look at our culture. For in our culture, we are possessed by several things. We are possessed by the trauma that happens to us. We are possessed by the toxic things that spread throughout our culture and all people. We are possessed by greed, where we put greed and money and profits before protecting people and the creation that God has given us. We are possessed by the things that we have. We are possessed by drugs that we might want that we think will make us better. And we want to keep accumulating those things because we can never quite have enough. When Jesus heals this man, this man is restored. This man feels the presence and power of Jesus within him, and he is changed and transformed. As we look to the healings in this Gospel of Luke, we will see that Luke brings Jesus' healings to restoration so that people can be joined back with community. Community is extremely important to Jesus, just as important as it is to this gospel writer, just as important as community is to all of us. I wonder. I wonder how long it took the people to stop blaming this man and to welcome him in, to stop blaming him for their troubles. I wonder how long it took for people to invite him into their homes. 
I wonder how long it took people to believe that the demons were really gone and that they weren't coming back. I wonder how long it took them to truly rejoice in the work of God through this man who had been possessed. How long did it take for the community to be a community? To be restored? This past week, I had the pleasure and honor of traveling with our Camp Formation students up to Camp Formation. 17 students were there. Our theme was discipleship and community. We talked about discipleship. And we talked about community. But one of the things that we did to help the kids understand community was team building. Now, some of you might be familiar with low ropes courses, and some of you may not be. But the low ropes course is an opportunity for kids to be together and work as a team. Their first assignment was to go through a spider web. Now, the spider web was between two trees, a rope in the shape of a spider web with all these different holes on each side. And there's one great big hole in the middle. But there were several challenges for the kids. They could not touch the rope when going through. If someone touched the rope, then they needed to start all over again. There was a large teeter-totter, huge, where if they needed someone to go through one of the upper holes, they could all stand on the end and the teeter-totter would lift them up or bring them down to some of the lower holes. As they're going through, they cannot touch the ground. They are to reach over to another log that is above the ground. If they touch the ground, it means they need to start all over. The JCs, the junior camp counselors, could not talk. The younger kids could talk. So we present this to them on Monday morning, or on Tuesday morning, and they begin their task at hand. Well, you can imagine how it might have gone. It didn't go so well that first time. There were kids who accidentally stepped on the ground who didn't remember the rule, and very soon the group found out that it didn't do much good to blame someone for an accident that happened, realizing that this could easily happen to any one of them as they go through the rope and touch it. The great big hole that they could come through was only meant for four people to go through. It was then closed once four people went through the largest hole. Otherwise, this would be very easy, wouldn't it? Everyone could just go through the largest hole. As they worked on this task for at least an hour and a half on Tuesday morning, you could see frustration drawing. And Kevin Anderson, our youth director, took the kids and took them aside, and we had a large, huge discussion where he kept asking the kids, what can we do differently? Trying to draw it out of them. What does it mean to be in community? They came up with listening. They came up with trying to understand some of the nonverbal communications that was given to them. They came up with all different kinds of different scenarios as to how this might work better. We did more team building activities that afternoon, and then on Wednesday morning, we tried it again. It was like these kids had a lobotomy. It was amazing. We saw community pull together. We had most of the same rules, but kids that crossed through did not wait on the other side and just stay on the log. They came closer, and they helped. And the kids that we needed to lift through some of the higher holes, lots of hands were there to support the other person. It was a beautiful sense of community. When we talk about community, there's something different about a faith community. There are all kinds of communities these kids could belong to. They could belong to a soccer team, the band. They can belong to a swim team. They can belong to a tennis team or a theater group. And all of these things are well and good. But we ask them, what's different about a faith community compared to the other communities that you can belong to? One of the things they came up with is in a faith community, you don't need 
any qualifications. You can be a part of it. No matter what age you are, you are welcome. When, asked, when we asked the kids what else was different, we can find love in other communities, but the source of love in a faith community, we recognize it as coming from God. The source of love in a faith community comes from God. And all God asks of us is for an authentic response, an authentic response to his unconditional love, to forgiveness that never ends, and to grace abounds as we experience these in our baptism and we see God's love for us through his son Jesus Christ and the blood shed on the cross. Community is about pulling together and looking out for each other and welcoming all in and inviting more and more to experience, to experience this amazing love of God. Jesus knows that we will experience fear. Jesus knows that oftentimes we'll be a part of something that's toxic and that traumatic things will happen to us in our life. But Jesus also knows that the transcendent nature of God is mixed up there, mixed up in that ugliness, bringing to us new life and growing us. The interesting thing is, is that our eschatology is glorious, but not quite yet. We are living in this time of, yes, we know that Christ has conquered death, but our freedoms are not quite within our grasp. And in this time, Jesus calls us to be his family, to be the ones who hear the word of God and do it. Amen. Amen. Please stand as we say and profess our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
You may be seated. United in Christ and guided by his spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Lord, in your mercy, we come before you, Lord, giving you thanks for the sense of place and the relationships of mutual love and support that we too often take for granted. Guide this community to have arms that are stretched out in a way that invites all. Lord, in your mercy. We ask that our ears be opened so we might hear the word of God and then do it. Grant us eyes of inclusion and invitation, ways to offer the wider community a sense of home, particularly those who are on the margins, who have felt disconnected and unwanted. Lord, in your mercy. We lift up the leaders of all nations and ask that their hearts be moved to seek wisdom, speak truth, and care for all who experience poverty, prejudice, or violence. We continue to lift up the Ukrainian nation and pray for this war to stop. We are grateful for the collaborative efforts of the ELCA through the World Relief Fund that has contributed over $9 million to help those in need in the Ukraine. Further, the work of all people working for peace. Lord, in your mercy, You hear the cries of those who suffer. Come to the aid of all who are homeless, naked, hungry, and sick. Lord, we lift up today those who are on our prayer list, those undergoing treatments and tests, Dan, Elizabeth, Rhonda, Debbie, Weston. We lift up those with health concerns, Darlene, Rod, Kate, Doug, Kevin, Bob, Rebecca. We lift up those with upcoming surgery, Marlis and Jack. We lift up those who are hospitalized, Paisley. We lift up those recovering from surgery, Nancy, Kurt, Bonnie, John, Elsa, Ludwig, Marcia, Betty, Kirk, Dan, and Don. We lift up those who are suffering from chronic and long-term health concerns, Gail, Nan, Barb, Doug, Berlin, Jake, Ken, Rudy, Pam, Kit, Jackie, Leslie, Dan, Clark, Terry, Dave, Isaac, Randy, Susie. And we lift up those who are in hospice care. Coralie, Bob, Cheryl, Ken, and Bill. Lord God, for those whom we have lifted up, bring to them your comfort of healing and peace. Lord, we also ask that you bring peace to any experiencing mental illness, that they can clearly recognize your loving presence. Lord, in your mercy. For those who celebrate and those who grieve on this Father's Day, nurture mutual love and tender care in all relationships. Comfort those for whom this day brings sadness or longing. And Lord God, we also ask that you build stronger bonds with those who are in relationship with their fathers. 
Lord, in your mercy. We lift up the various ministries of love of Christ. We ask for your guidance in our music ministries and faith formation and faith in action. Guide our board as they make decisions and prepare our hearts for our next steps. Lord, in your mercy. For our faithful departed, for whom all earthly joys and sorrows have disappeared, and who now see the full picture of God's living presence, that they may be at peace in his sight. Console grieving families and console the families of John and Beth Hess and Kathy Shoemaker, family and friends upon the death of Kathy's husband and Beth's brother-in-law. Console Roger at Alexander, family and friends upon the death of his wife, Mary. And we lift up Joe and Joey Bogoshevsky, family and friends upon the death of his dad and Joey's grandfather, Joe Bogoshevsky, Jr. Bring to these families that are grieving your comfort, your peace, and let them know that your presence is near. Lord, in your mercy, we lift up all who are suffering displacement from the floods at Yellowstone. Bring them your courage and hope. Lord, in your mercy. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. On the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he gave thanks. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you, for the forgiveness of all sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come, taste and see that the Lord is good. God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing, oh praise Him, hallelujah, thou burning sun with golden beam, thou silver moon with softer gleam, oh praise Him, oh praise Him. Things that creep. 
washed by his blood. Come and rejoice in his great love. Oh, praise him. Alleluia. Christ has defeated every sin. Turn in power to reign. Heaven and earth will join to sing. Oh, praise Him. Alleluia. Then who shall fall on bended knee? All creatures of our God and King. And let us pray. Jesus Christ, host of this meal, you have given us not only this bread and cup, but your very self, that we may feast on your great love. Filled again by these signs of your grace, may we hunger for your reign of justice. May we thirst for your way of peace. For you are Lord forevermore. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and keep you in his grace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand for our sending song, Yes, I Will.
and love the Lord. Sing. 